Mm -hmm. Okay. They are live. Let me just log on on the phone so I can see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, right, uh, oh, yeah, we're live now. Right, that would help. Wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, bollocks. Right. I'm not getting any notifications. What's going on? Oh, I know. <laughs> Good evening, all. Stay, stay. Oh, yeah. We are back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're not having this. Good evening, viewers. Hey, Joe. Right. Happy New Year. Okay. I'll just oh, put this down. Mark's pizza. Was it Domino's? No, no, no. It's. Uh... Oh, hang on. Ew. A square one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I prefer them because you can dish them out in little, you know, in, in, in individual squares instead of yeah. slices. Right, let's just... Right, okay. Um, We've got a really cool delay here, actually, because on my phone, mm. on my phone, you've just held up the pizza. Oh, okay. Well, then. <laughs> Ah, here we are. Right, let's just go into that. <clears throat> In answer to your question, Joe, our Christmas was pretty crap because we had to put up with COVID for 10 days. Hey, Joe, it's meat feast with extra meat. Ooh, meat feast. Yummy. So, yes, uh, we ended up having to be in isolation over Christmas and New Year. So we had um, tested positive on an LFT on the, on the 23rd, uh, had a PCR test on the 24th, and the confirmation of a positive test didn't come through until the 30th after I complained because my son had, Ethan had a PCR test done on Boxing Day and got his results about 18 hours later. And yet we were still waiting for ours. So I kicked a stink up and they chased it and we then got our results in. And uh, we had to isolate. So it. Um, what happened? He actually had the flu and he sneezed so hard he farted and blew a ball off. That's what happened. To be honest, this is why I agree in the change of the rules now about the, the PCR test not having to be done if you if you haven't got any symptoms. Um, I'd never had any symptoms. I just literally had a normal standard headache, which a couple of paracetamol got rid of it. Hmm. And that was it. I didn't have the the um, the cough or the cold or the sniffle. Lots of people have had that now. You know, I, I hadn't had any of the other symptoms. Um, so I agree with this rule about the PCR test. You know, mm. if you don't have the symptoms, you don't have the PCR test. You just isolate and then do an NFT test on day six, day seven. And if they're both, neg both negative, then away you go. Get on with it. Mm. And and, and, it's, and it's right. It should be that because... I didn't do a, I didn't do an LFT test until day six and day seven, but that was because I was told to. I reckon if I'd have taken an LFT test on day five, I would have still come up as negative because I, I it was gone pretty quickly. Ethan had it for two days. Hi, Randy. So. Oh, Vienna, bloody hell! Hi, Vienna. It's um, a bit of a joke, really, to be honest, but it is what it is. Just a little bit. It just annoyed us because we were supposed to have had friends friends coming down. Well, you were supposed to be coming down before Christmas. Yeah, I was. And then all that went pear shakes, and then we had friends coming down on New Year's Eve. We had to phone them up and tell them not to bother because uh, we were isolating. So, mm. but it was just a nightmare. The second I went out in the garden, my phone went off, telling me I was supposed to be indoors. I went into my back garden and my phone pinged to say I should be indoors. Um, after I'd already done two negative tests, I'm like, right, well, I'm free. I can go out and, and get shopping and things like that. Ethan was also negative, so he was able to come out as well. So we both went to the local Tesco's. And no sooner had I walked out the front door and got in the car, I got pinged by NHS Track and Trace saying, dear Ellen, you do realise you're supposed to be isolating. 
Ellen? I didn't realise I turned myself into Ellen. Because I'd registered all our cases through my phone, they automatically assumed that Ellen was going outside, so they sent me a message to tell Ellen to get back indoors. <laughs> you bad guy. Like, you idiots. You ain't got a clue. <laughs> it was quite funny. No. Um, let's, well, right, we'll make sure that next uh, uh, New Year's is a lot better. <clears throat> a lot better for you guys. Yeah, so excuse me, Eugene, I haven't eaten today. We're, we're going to make up for it. Hmm. We've we'd already had two Christmas days anyway, so uh, we we sort of we were being a bit greedy by having a third before you know on Christmas Day. So we had our own little family Christmas Day here anyway, but we had a Christmas Day with my parents before they went back to Corfu. So I remember that, yeah. It, um, that was that was quite nice to actually sort of still get a Christmas Day, even though it weren't on Christmas Day. So that well, was, uh, pretty cool. Ah, get off my leg, you twit. I went drove down <laughs> uh picked my mum up, brought her back up here. Had Christmas here. We went around Taylor's, she did big Christmas dinner and everything. And um drove my mum my mum back down, went around Rachel's for uh half a New Year's Eve night and then came back and uh went and had drinks around uh, Taylor's for actually I drank my own body weight in um uh Jaeger Bombs, to be fair, on New Year's Eve. Great fun. <laughs> but yeah, it was all cool. Um, and moving swiftly on, um, yeah. with everybody, happy new year to everybody, and uh, welcome back. And it's good to be back doing this. And um, so much has happened in the time we've had off, in it, we've, we've been yeah. Wayne and I have been talking to each other about it, and so many things have happened. It's just in the UFO community. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's <laughs> so that's the first one of the year. There you I go. was gonna say, first one of the new year. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it. There's been a lot of um, strange goings on, to be honest. Um, and a lot of people are starting to pick up on it. A lot of people are sort of um, sort yes, of making sir. it more public knowledge um, of what's going on, and it's getting harder and harder to hide it. It is. Yeah. Um, Especially when you do live feeds or live broadcasts and you accidentally cock up. And now it's gone viral. It's gone all over the world. And thousands and millions of people have seen it. It's going to be very hard to deny it. Yeah, exactly. It... Do you know what? Why is it every, <laughs> time, every time there's food, you can hear the Jaws theme tune and you'll see a cat's tail come along? <laughs> So yeah, it's um, it's, it's 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 getting quite. I think this year we might actually get some more, um, some more disclosure coming through. I, I think there's um, I can't remember what his name was now. There was some guy I was watching a documentary the other day, um, the Black Vault or something it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he is like our friend Robert. Um sort of comes out with a lot of disclosure things and he has actually commented and come forward and said that the government has actually now been given by the Pentagon something like three and a half million pages of paperwork. Do you know some of the things, that, and I'm sure you, you'll have, when you've seen this, you'll have gone, oh, that's got me, is literally over the Christmas period, wasn't it on the build up to your face sightings went from that to that, yeah, and now they've got to sightings that you can't say of marsh gas or ball lightning or any other bollocks that they come out with. It's got to the point where you can see the craft, see the shape, see the engines, and yeah. it doesn't matter what the government say, they cannot deny it anymore. And then the thing that got me was, um, them giving the uh Catholic Church, was it? 3.5 million to train up a load of priests alongside NASA to prepare people for the coming of vi our visitors, our brothers and sisters from different planets. So if, as the uh, full disclosure <laughs> ding, report said, they don't know where they come from, but they can't say it's from, no, it's from outer space. If that's the case, why are they getting the Catholic Church to gear up to prepare people for it? 
yeah, and I, th I think that is also another reason why they've got the replacement for the Hubble Space Telescope up there. You know, the John, the John Webb, so James Webb, James Webb, something like that. James oh, Webb that space. That's, that's just gone up into space. Um, it, it, solar panels have just been unreleased. It has just just been released and that's now whisking off into space um and the thing is is this space telescope is supposed to be much more powerful than the hubble space telescope right. um so what experiments are they going to be doing with that and isn't that isn't that the one that's done been done to look for signs of civilizations on planets? Yeah. It's so strong it can see industrial. That is, that is one of the web, one of the missions of the James Webb Telescope is is to actually search for life on other planets. Yeah, and quite possibly to help communicate with it. Oh, I it's not going to be for it. I, I, I'm reckoning the way things are going i'm reckoning this year possibly we're gonna see have like literally irrefutable worldwide i think so mm. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if if something does turn up and and, and they're not going to be able to deny it mm. i mean at the moment as it stands if you get a handful of people like with say for instance the phoenix lights incident and that was what 97 march 97 not to be concerned, not to be confused with Peter Kay and Phoenix Knights. Yeah, not Phoenix Knights. <laughs> um, you know, that's oh, well, we are there. And the amount of people that saw those lights, you couldn't deny them, even when the military tried to say their flares. Two, there was two guys went on to, uh, to document and actually say they were flares. Um, and saying that from the distance the film footage was taken, you wouldn't have seen the smoke from the flares. And I'm like, yes, but the flares don't last that long. They don't stay stationary. They're on little parachutes, and they will come down in time. Yeah. But these weren't. These were staying there, and the lights were going on and coming off and going That's on, right. and, and they were moving about. Was it flares the men who got rushed up and then got told to come out with a load of nonsense? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is a lot of the which was a lot of the cases and this is why the MIB got you know and, and mm -hmm. uh, project blue book and all of that was it was the whole idea was to go around and give a different story to what these people had seen but the problem is when so many people see something you mm -hmm. can't cover every aspect you can't go around to every witness and silence everybody especially oh. when the video gets put onto the internet and, and and as we've seen with TikTok, you, you go through TikTok and you look at a lot of people's yeah. videos on there and they'll go, oh, this is the second time I've put this up. And that's because it gets removed the first time round. The person that puts it on there sees that and puts it up again. Yeah. And it will constantly go round. And while people, all it takes is for one person to put something onto the internet and you could have thousands of people then share that video. Mm -hmm. And then it's so hard to get rid of it because it's been shared and saved by so many other users that that video will exist everywhere and you can't hide it. Which brings us nicely onto a certain uh, donut shaped craft that appeared, was it yesterday? Yes. Our lovely donut. Um, this was um, a, 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 a Starlink mission. That was was being done yesterday morning and it's quite amusing um because <coughs> obviously with starlink and nasa they like to uh, do their little life feeds because you know the falcon 9 is quite a good piece of kit for the boost for the booster for the rocket booster to come back to earth and land on a drone ship so it can be re cleaned up and yeah. reused that's pretty damn good going. However, because SpaceX and NASA like to share the the, uh, the glory of it all, they don't really like to be too happy to share other aspects, other things that may pop up on their live video feed. See, um, I've always found that a contradiction because Elon Musk is always talking about 
uh, visitors from other planets and how we should welcome it and this that, and the other. But when it comes the to problem, the, space, the problem is, is that Elon Musk has to tread carefully because he goes into joint partnership with the likes of NASA. Now, SpaceX missions they're different because if he's just launching his satellites into space and nothing for NASA, then that's all down on him. Mm. However, if he's under contract with NASA, NASA may have a say on the video feeds. Mm. And so he may not be able to allow mm. full broadcasting rights or, or, or certain aspects of it. And so therefore, NASA would be in control of it. So they could have just turned around to him and said, look, if we want you to cut the feed so many minutes in to the launch, then you do so. No. However, this particular video that was released of yeah. yesterday morning got leaked before NASA could do anything about it, yeah. before SpaceX could do anything about it. And as the, the rocket booster was returning back to Earth, so the main part of the, the Falcon 9 was up in space getting ready to deliver its payload, the booster was traveling back to Earth. And as Post it was link. traveling, it made a boo-boo. There, left-hand corner by the, by the spatula. Hang on, let me move it. There we go. There. I'll post, I'll find the link and I'll post it in the, in the chat. Okay, hang on. Very interesting. Uh, I'll zoom in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. What's that? Exactly. Uh, now, let me find that link. In the video, and it was the, yeah. um, was it Underbelly, Underbelly 2.0? Something like that, wasn't it? I think it was that um, that uh, that put it onto YouTube. On the actual video itself, you see this actually comes into view. Right. The actual sunlight starts off on one one section, and it slowly reveals the rest of it. And then, as quick as you like, as soon as the full thing came into view, NASA turned around and said, "We're not having that. We want that taken off." So. They removed it. They, they went to an internal camera from inside the booster. And it was gone. When they came back to the external shot, the, um, the rocket booster had actually come closer to Earth. But what they didn't notice, and again, was too late for them to do anything about it, was there was this little white object shooting away from the booster it was literally heading up the screen and across it won't let me post it won't let me post the link or anything <coughs> in the chat on the side of this um yeah. uh, which one was it? it was youtube wasn't it yeah it was out of the two you sent me it was the top one right copy Oh, Facebook doesn't allow posting comments to groups. Typical. Ping. There we go. I've you done it. it in there. Uh, no. Why is it not letting me? Your what I did was I copied and pasted the link that I shared to you on Messenger. Yeah. And then put it into the comments. Ah, uh, I copied it directly out of Messenger and tried to put it straight in. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be why. Right. But, um, yeah, so it's, um, it, um, yes, NASA, or NASA or SpaceX tried to sort of come away from this weird donut shape. Um, clearly it was in space. It wasn't on the ground, it uh, wasn't on Earth. It, guys it watch really the video funny. watch the video that wayne's just posted the link in yeah turn the volume down because the guy on it is annoying as hell but just yeah. just just watch the video and you'll see a donut go bleep, next you to see the it pop up and then the nasa or spacex they cut the camera from the live broadcast from outside the booster yeah. to inside the secondary stage so that you can't see the donut shape then yeah. after about 30 seconds it goes back to the outside of the booster and the, the donut has, has clearly gone it's it shot off 
But what they didn't notice was you see a small white object go At straight the across and off the screen. And the claim is that it's quite possibly that donut shape. Hmm. Um, so they don't know whether it's extraterrestrial or, or whether it's something of ours that they don't want us to see. What, you mean I.e. Space? space Force. Um, it could be something of theirs that they don't want us to see, so they cut the camera feed. NASA would have known it was in sight, so they should have already preempted that one. But yeah. I think it got into shot by accident, and they've gone, oh, shit, quick, change camera for you. And they've, they've moved it pretty quick. So they've, they're cocked up there because now yeah. it's too late yeah. to do anything. Evening, Nicola. Uh, and it was, that video was, um, it was just the, the way, I love the way it was there, and then this donut goes, bling, and then they go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, with it, with oh, the shit, let's see this quick, get out. It's the same as the uh, space station ones, isn't it? Yeah. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprising if if you know like um, Musk has been told to keep quiet. Hmm. I still think. Excuse me, eating. Um, I still think we're we are very, maybe not not um, ships landing in the capitals and people coming out going hi guys, but I think. Major proof will be this year. I think uh, the amount of radio signals and the broadcasting that's out there, mm. I think any any extraterrestrial with any ounce of sense, they're supposed to be that more intelligent than us. They would see what our governments of the world are like. Let's hope. They would see what our governments and our military is capable of doing to its own people, let alone to them. Yeah. Um, and I think that if they are going to sort of turn up, they're not just going to go straight to Biden and go, hello, you all right? You're going to come to come in peace, you know. People. That's the last thing they're going to want to do because they're not going to want to start an intergalactic war or anything with the first idiot they come across. So they're going to select where they're going to land and they're going to select a place that is going to be more, uh, how can I put it, more communal. There's going to be more members of the public around, the average people, the people that aren't, aren't stupid, aren't likely to reach for their Needs gun and start yeah. firing straight away. Needs. So not America then? I don't think it will be. If it, And if it is, I think it will be somewhere in America where... Maybe there's not so much military presence. Hmm. Um, and the people can walk around. are probably more open-minded. And that's that's probably why there's been so many sightings in places like Phoenix um, and things like that. So they're testers to see yeah. whether it's worth them landing there, to see what the reactions are going to be. It, to me, I wouldn't... You know, I'm, if I was going to visit another country, I'd come to visit. You want that again? <laughs> I love it. It's my favourite. You know, if you're if you're going to go off to somewhere like um, I don't know, say Athens for the first time. Yeah. You've never been to Greece before in your life. You go to Athens. Now you're going to go to the Acropolis. You're going to go to the original Olympic Stadium. You're going to go to all these places that tourists would go to. But if you're an alien coming from another planet and coming to this planet, the last thing you're going to do is sightsee. Mm. You're going to introduce yourself to the general population. The last thing you're going to do is stop at Athens to go to the Acropolis and do a bit of sightseeing. No. You're going to go to a built-up area where loads of people are going to see you and they're not going to react with guns. So maybe going to the Acropolis would be a good idea. I mean, I, I, I sat at the Acropolis and there's there's a little hill nearby. I think they called it St. Peter's Mount or something. And we were sitting on this big pile of rocks. And I was just taking photos, doing a panoramic shot. And I heard clearly, on and, and my phone picked up as well, the sound of trumpets. It sounded okay. like a load of trumpets were all playing the same note at the same time. We all heard it. And we're like, where the hell has that come from? But we were the only people on this big sort of pile of rocks. 
we were looking around everywhere below us and not anywhere could we see a band or a bunch of trumpeters or anything. And we're how like, you where did that sound come from? Say again? So had you eaten a dodgy gyros? Uh, no, I don't think it was a dodgy gyros. I, I, I wonder, you know what they say about the Horns of Jericho being heard in various I've, places. As soon as you said world. that, I think the Horns of Jericho, yeah. Well, that, wasn't, we, that wasn't there, was it? It was almost sounded like the mysterious horn sounds that people had been hearing all over the world in places like India and ah, Canada. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the strange trumpet sounds that have been heard in the air, and yet no one could actually find or pinpoint where they were coming from. It was like that. It was literally mm. it was all around us. You could hear it everywhere. And we were looking and couldn't find nothing. It was the only way I could describe it. it was exactly the same as that. And I wish I still had that phone that I recorded that video on. Because as I'm recording the panoramic view, you hear this. And you're like, what the hell is that? Yeah, that's what those um, noise, weird noises were that everybody... Um, they're still being heard, those noises as well. Yeah. And um, in North America, the sounds of uh, explosions and stuff underground is has still carrying on. And um, I was watching an interesting video the other day, and it did an overlay map of North America. Hi, Jacqueline. Um, and they'd marked where all, all the, um, uh, not, not sightings, but hearings are. And they go in almost an oval all the way around North yeah. America. Strange that. But it was, it's like with the Phoenix Lights. When they when they mapped out the, the between the first and second sighting, um, they 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 obviously got these two pinpoint marks, and there is like a docu film, and I thought it was quite funny actually because it was based on the Phoenix Lights, hmm. and it was based around the, the film footage that was found, and it was a bit Blair Witchy, where yeah. they found this mysterious tape. And this tape was never be seen on the internet or seen anywhere because it shows what happens yeah. to these three kids. Yeah. But what they'd done was they'd followed a point where the first sighting and the second sighting made a perfect line together. And they then looked at where the next point would be. And they went to this mountaintop and they stayed on this mountaintop until sunset. And they saw these strange lights and they thought, oh, is that over this Air Force base? Is that a flare? And they went, well, it can't be a flare because a flare does not stand there. And then all of a sudden, go moving. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, just break up. There's, you hear this explosion and then it breaks up. But then it goes into nightfall and all three of them get abducted. Quite a weird film. Quite a weird film, but it's, it's basically a docu film based on the Phoenix Lights. Yeah. But what they'd shown you was actual real film footage of petroglyphs that are carved into the rocks hmm. of spirals. And they're saying, see spirals. What have we been seeing all over the world when SpaceX goes up? Yeah. Particularly yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere, like places like Norway and further up. Depending on the atmospheric conditions, when the boosters are released and whatnot, it makes yeah. that little weird spiral, doesn't it, when they're being released? So, of course, it coincides with these petroglyphs. And they're saying, is this because of the atmospheric presence of, of a an unknown um, energy source either coming yeah. into the atmosphere or going out of the atmosphere? But the petroglyphs are thousands of years old. Well, that's like Nazca, isn't it? The, the Nazca lines. Um, you look at all of them. The biggest one that there is is that astronaut standing there waving and it's looking up. Um, and I think the oldest one they've got is some sort of stoned hippie cat. But um, all these things were designed to be uh, seen, what was it, at, at 1.5 miles up or something? Or something, it was at a cer certain height, optimum height, yeah. where these things were designed to, you could only see them properly from being up in the air. Yeah, and then, yeah. and it's like we, we, you know, we were saying before we, we we started the show. More and more and more and more stuff is coming to light, which points to um, uh, precursors. You know, p p 
people before us. Um, and there's so many legends saying that they were di we're, we're like a human being 3.0, you know, and there was two point all, all the previous ones, previous versions of before us, not cavemen, not any of that nonsense, but um, people with serious uh, knowledge and, and technology and this and the other. Um, I was saying to you about that, that there's a lost continent that's been found. Um, not Lemuria, wasn't that one? I can't remember what it was called, but it, it's one that's been found and they, they found it. Uh, the European shelf, continental shelf, basically claimed it and dragged it under 1.5 million years ago. Now, this continental shelf is the missing one where uh, Atlantis is supposed to have been. And there's been more and more things found. There was something found on the moon. There was something found elsewhere. I can't remember where. But it's all around about 1.5 million years old. Um, now they're saying that there was a massively advanced civilization in Antarctica. There's not possibly. They're saying, they're saying there was. Um, the uh, uh, depleted uranium was 1.5 million years old that's been found. Yep. And it's all say, stay, coming back to everything that we've mentioned in previous shows last year is yep. now coming to light that we were actually bloody right. <laughs> and there was a massive civilization that was all over the world on all the lost continents and everything that were basically about 10,000 years ahead of us now, technologically, te technological, technology wise, <clears throat> 1.5 million years ago. Yeah. Um, and when you think about that, and you think that they had flying machines, they had all this technology to move stuff and, you know, Laser, everything, laser cutting, it explained where the gods came from. It would explain how a lot of things got built and made. And it would also explain all the legends, all the tribes of us now as humans. It, it's, I think a lot of it has been lost in translation down over the millennia. And it's actually been the people before us. And we've confused, yeah. because of their technology, we've confused it as, oh, the gods. You know, and I had this on Facebook last night where a woman tried to say, uh, oh, well, where did they come from? And I was like, well, here, but before that, who knows? They, they would have obviously come from elsewhere. 1.5 million years ago, they could have come from Mars because that wouldn't have been screwed up then. Yeah. You know? Um, and You could have been on one of the other planets that are out in the next solar yeah. system. Over. Well, well, you know yourself, again and again and again and again, so many different places have said that we originally came from Mars. So, you know, but this this, this woman was saying, oh, that, but how can it be because there's a firmament around the Earth? And, and I'm like, I respect your views. Anybody who's religious, I respect your views. But genuinely, you've seen the rockets, yeah? You, you, you've seen the videos from all the space station and the rockets and stuff. How the fuck can there be a, therm a firmament when we've got all this stuff going up there? And we sent uh, um, probes and the, the landers and everything onto Mars and onto other places. And Voyager's gone out the other side of the solar system. Yep. So if there's a firmament, how did that happen? And I'm like, you know yourself with this show, I'm respectful of anybody's religion. But when it comes to science it still shows that certain people with certain religions just don't listen. I'm not, yeah, that's I, not I, rude, but it's just meant certain people don't listen. Yeah, I think where, where science and religion are concerned, science can be classed as a religion to some people. Yeah. But when science, Scientology. Actually, mm. when science and technology actually proves certain things where other people have lived like the slowest business with the flat earthers yeah 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 you know they'll argue till they're blue in the face that the earth is a disc shape and then as soon as you mention about gravity and you mention about probes that have gone into space and taken pictures of the earth they will still come out with the excuses oh yeah but that was a picture taken of the flat earth but but you've got satellites that go around the and earth. And you can see and it's bloody round. Over the earth as it goes round. And there's no such thing as a disc shape. Otherwise, that disc could be constantly moving about and all the countries will be constantly moving. As I said before, everybody who's got a cat, if the world was flat, the cats would have knocked every bloody thing off the edge of the world. So, no. But yeah, but, when you, when you, somebody like that, 
didn't we say on previous shows about about the Pope coming forward and saying, "Oh, we do have uh, uh, people from other planets. It's well known. We need to welcome and welcome them. They yeah. they may possibly have different gods to us." And that was the Pope, the head of the Catholic faith, came out and said that two years ago, didn't he? In in his conclave. Now, if he's come out and said that, how can he still have people going, "Oh no, there's a firmament around the Earth. You can't leave the Earth. You can't go into space because there's a firmament." Yeah, and you've got you've got things like on this this documentary I was watching yesterday. I was saying about the Book of Enoch. Yeah, he that interesting, very interesting. And yeah. the Book of Enoch actually stated that whether it was God or whether it was a spiritual being came down in a disc shaped chariot. Yeah. How old's the Book of Enoch? Were the horns that were heard then? Did they go bow, 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 bow? Yeah, Spielberg was hanging on behind. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's got to be something in it. Um, when you've got, when you've got, um, and, and like I said, you know, I said ages ago, didn't I, that Earth is millions of years old. Yeah, so much older than they've been trying to let lead us to believe. So, how can it be that if you were to take another planet in the gold in the old green zone, the Goldilocks zone, in another solar system, was you know we could push the boat out and say fifty thousand years more advanced yeah. than us. If there was such a thing as a firmament, their technology would be that more advanced that they'd be able to get through that without a problem. Yeah. They'd be able to know how to bend the space and get from point A to point B a lot quicker. If you look at thermodynamics and 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 the um, theory of relativity and, and gravity and, and this you know, show Newton's... has thermal dynamics every single time we start <laughs> because we're hot. Newton's law of gravity and, and things like that. Hmm. They're only recent things. They're only things that are sort of in in the the grand scale of things. Have only just been realised, well, and look, straight away, within days, somebody else will come out with something and go, "Well, actually, this theory has a flaw. You could do this if this was in place, but you could only change that law or that rule with if, technology, yeah, yeah, yeah. with theoretical science. Yeah. But it's putting theoretical science into practical science to disprove those theories and to alter them." Look at everything we have spoken about on previous shows because we, we've done some corkers of shows in the past. I'm not going to do a long one tonight because I'm absolutely knackered, but we, we will do. But some of the things that we've spoken about, isn't it? Uh, 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 warp engines, um, impulse engines. And um, bugger me, what did Elon Musk come out with last week? We've got light speed engine. Or, or was it almost light speed engine? I think yep. he said almost light speed engine. And um, so we, we're talking engines. Star Trek. Um, well, I've, I've said it before, though. I, I can't remember how long ago it was I said it. But I said to, you oh, know, yeah. to, to travel at the speed of light. Hello, Ghost. What does light weigh? Light Nothing. doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't have any mass. Hello. So to travel at the speed of light, you have to have zero mass. Or you have to weigh nothing. Yeah. To travel faster than the speed of light, you have to weigh negative nothing. So it's, it's actually having the technology and the capability of making something minus mass to be able to travel faster than the speed of light. But the so, fact that we've got there to the speed of light almost spot on. Exactly. But to travel faster than the speed of light, you've got to be weighing negative mass. And all that, needs, all the, all that um, needs is technology. The plasma stuff, isn't it? I, I remember one of the shows we did last, was it last year? Yeah, last year. And they were talking about engines which have a plasma uh, field around them. And when they had yep. that plasma field around them, it literally made them, because they were going so fast, it made them do negative. So they could theoretically go FTL. Now, the fact that Elon Musk is... And the thing is, we all know Elon Musk very very clever and i'd love to meet the guy i think it's fucking awesome but very clever he's got more he's got other things going on there for, if, for him to come out and say we've got an, we've got an almost the speed of light engine 
and then it was the Musk uh, uh, technologies that stated about having um, that field, that flux field around an engine to make it weigh less than, than light, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, going at those speeds. So remembering that stuff, Musk has come out with, we've got an almost speed of light engine now, and he's got the technology to be able to coat the engines in whatever that field was that means he's got an engine theoretically that can, that can go ftl yeah and it, it, the, the only the only issue then he's got is it has to be tested in the right situation yeah. and the only situation yeah. he's going to have where he can test it is in space because hmm. that's the only real place because obviously that's the intention of use to be used for space travel do you think do you think the spacex satellites do you think they're there to give everybody internet or do you think there's actually something else on them as well that's going to be able to help jump start things like that i don't know i mean it, it, like seems, a gateway a bit, or something. it seems a bit strange actually because i was i was asked if i wanted to help beat the test starlink hmm. hey, Dougie. I, when i when i found out how much it was going to cost i went now nah, see you later <laughs> I'm like, nah, I don't want this. Do you see what I mean, though? Because, the, 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 again, something we spoke about last year, the fact that he, he's literally encircling the globe in his satellites, which I get, I understand, but now that he's come out with, we've got an almost the speed of light engine capable of almost the speed of light, plus the technology that they came out with last year or the year before saying, oh, we can, we've can, we got this uh, field generator that once it generates a field around something, it makes it weigh less than light if it's going at a certain speed. So you put that with his engine, you've got, you've got FTL faster than light speed. Do you I think mean, that those things would help give it a boost? No, I don't think they are. I think they're for communication. I think they are communication, but I also think that they're not just one way. I don't think they're just for providing a global communication. No, link. I think they're for. I think it's for going the other way. Really? Well, if you think about it, all these radio telescopes, when you look at them in places like America, they've got fields full of these dishes. Now, these dishes create a grid. You're not having my pizza, bugger off. And that grid can pinpoint in certain directions. Now, yeah. can you imagine? Ooh, I see where you're going. Yeah. A grid the size of this planet would so much increase the capability of communication mm -hmm. further yeah. out in the solar system because you've got that grid is not, you know, two miles square. It's the entire planet. Yeah. This whole barrier around the planet is being used as one <laughs> big. <laughs> it's being used as one big satellite dish. You think of the with the combined energies that those satellites would give, one signal would travel thousands of times further yeah. than the um the old um, Puerto Rican telescope that collapsed mid last yeah. year. Uh you know, it's gonna travel thousands of miles further than that one ever did. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. It's like that um the uh, the Hubble telescope that's now been taken over a new one. The furthest one that the Hubble telescope did, the oh, what was it? The light that we see on that picture that was taken, and it was what's his name? He used to be the keyboarder in um, D. Reed. Right. He, he, I was watching it, his thing, and he, and he, he was showing this picture. It was the furthest looking one that um, the Hubble ever did, and it was something like three hundred and fifty million or billion light years away and he was saying that basically the light that we've seen in that picture was around before our planet existed and it's taken that long to get from there to, to where we are and are now and it's just like fucking hell um but you I, see, that, that's the idea behind theoretical science yeah, you yeah, look yeah. at these things and then you look you go right okay well if that's the case it takes so many so many seconds to get from point A to point B at that speed, then that's obviously the speed of light. We know that. That is fact. But if you could change things and you could alter things and make it actually go faster than the speed of light, what happens then? And that's where theoretical science comes in. 
I think my own my own personal theory, but everything that we've spoken about over the, the last few years, not just the Dark Mirror show, but the last few years you and I have been doing this. Um, and we've spoken about God knows what, and, and we've spoken about uh, theoretical physics and theoretical uh, warp drives and this, that, and the other. And every single thing that we have spoken about to do with UFOs, not ghosts and ghoulies and stuff like that, but to do with um, a lot of conspiracy theories, uh, ufology, US, and U USO as well, have happened. It's come. It's it's starting to come to fruition. It's all starting to happen. And we've always said this is going to happen. That's going to happen. This is. And so many people have gone. No, you're nuts. And I do regularly get messages from people saying, "Do you know how you?" And it's normally the the, the religious ones. You do realize how you sound. You know, you guys are bonkers. This that, and the other. And it's like we may sound bonkers, but what you've got to realize is you guys with your religion. When you say that stuff to us, you look bonkers. Watch your space. See what happens. And then bugger me. It's happening, and it's like Joe has said. Was that? Do you do you think uh, Muskie was offered a lot of money, etc., for making something for the government? He pass it up. I think he would because he wants to put a million people on Mars, um, regardless of what NASA and the others have said. He wants to put a million people with his I own. Think, when you look at when you look at the amount of funding that NASA gets from the American government, if NASA need more funding, they have to go through. Um, they have to go through Congress to be able to be given more funding. Yeah, that's if right. they know they can get a big businessman on board that can inject public money or his own he money, would. he's got the technology. He's got the know-how. He's but, obviously got. He's obviously got the scientists there to actually I mean, look at look at the way NASA's done it. I mean, NASA, for years, they were using a space shuttle, which was its own reusable spacecraft as such. Joe, you plum. Oh. Um, and then, you know, for years, the only the main the main booster was not reusable. The side boosters were, they came back to Earth. But the main booster wasn't. As soon as the space shuttle got into space, it went off, people it had to do, release yeah. its payload, flew back to Earth, and it was then checked over, reused again. Then obviously, after the last space shuttle disaster, everything went tits up. NASA stopped doing reusable spacecraft, and they just sent the silly little craft up to yeah. restock the, the International Space Station. Right, yeah. and everything else. Then all of a sudden, Elon that Musk. We know of. Elon Musk turns up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's we've got a reusable spacecraft. The booster comes back down, it's self-guiding, and it lands on an unmanned drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean or wherever that drone ship is needed to be. Have you that seen the Nabba that they back. he's invented? Yeah. Mm. Joe, the whole reason that um, they're doing it to Mars is because, A, it's the closest planet to us that's got a vague atmosphere, and B, it, it could be terraformed. But the only reason they're doing it to Mars is because it's the closest one, realistically, we can reach and set up a uh, uh, an outlying... Um, and also, it's um, it's also a case of what happened to Mars. Yeah, and that's another well, reason. You know, we know Mars has got gravity. We know Mars has an atmosphere, although it's very thin. It has an atmosphere. We also know that there is water on Mars because it has polar regions. Yeah. That means if there is water, there is oxygen. Exactly, yeah. Where is all of that water? It's underneath. We know but, that Mars is colder yeah. than Earth because it's further away from the sun. And the thing, the thing is, is also with um, some shows we did a couple of years ago and last year, we spoke about certain people who've come forward and said there's actually bases on on, on Mars and on Dark Sail and Moon. There has been for a long time. Uh, we've had boots on Mars for quite a while. We're not supposed, nobody's supposed to know. And now all of a sudden we've, we've gone from literally, as you said, oh, we can't do the space shuttle since that blew up to, oh, look at all, look at, look at, look at all this technology we've got. Where the fuck, where? And then Elon Musk is there like, mm-hmm. And if you listen to his stuff, he gives away a lot without saying too much, if you know what I mean. Very clever dude, very clever. And I'd I love mean, where is, you know, like I said, NASA need, needs extra funding. I where like him. Get that yeah, extra funding from if the government doesn't give it to them. They've got to go to private companies. They have, Andy. 
Um, and, and then obviously Elon Musk all of a sudden pops up out of the middle of nowhere and says, I'm going to help invest with NASA. I've got this, this, this and this. And now all of a sudden SpaceX seems to be the biggest thing in space travel. Talk to everybody. I've just got to let the dog out. I think she's asking. Sorry. Oh, dear. Really? Really? Uh, I guess they have found lots of exoplanets just like Earth, only bigger. There, Joe, there are loads. Uh, oh, sorry, Andy, even. Um, they know for a fact that there are a lot more planets out there that are capable of sustaining life. It's measuring the distance between us and them as to ascertain how far they are and how long it would take to get there under current technology. Um, you Mark could at the up, moment is the closest realistically. Yeah, you could come up with theoretical technology and say, oh yeah, we could get to Alpha Centauri in in two days. But that's theoretical science. And eventually in, say, I don't know, 150 years' time, that could be a possibility. I you think... Know, because theoretical science is still theory and is a possibility. I think that with the way things are going, and again things we talked about last year we're going to see ships with may not be full light speed but almost light speed thanks to elon musk yeah. i reckon within the next 10 years we're going to have stuff capable of going Pew! and that's that's one of the things that they came out with last year wasn't it if we and it was a big wasn't it oh we, we've invented an impulse engine and first of all the year before us it was oh to make an impulse engine, we can do it, but it's going to be the size of a house and it'll move you about a millimeter a second, you know? And now all of a sudden they're going, yeah, yeah, we got impulse engines, they can move a ship, it's fine. And then and then it was, oh, FTL, or we, oh, if we did it, we'd have to ride either and create a warp wave and ride on it, or do sails, massive sails, and we can create a warp bubble and we will sail on that. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, we have almost the speed of light capable engines. And this is all they give us, they drip feed, like with everything, they drip feed us these stupid little bits of information. And then the following year, oh, look, look, this has just happened. Excuse me, but we, we did we did a complete show about it. And again, as I said, without going near, 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 everything that's coming to fruition at the moment, we've spoken about and said will happen. I think Joe's, Joe's like asking half a million questions all in one sentence. <laughs> um, we don't know where they've come from simply because they've got to be they've got to be made to feel safe to actually stand there and go plus the government said don't tell anybody yet i come from over here or i come from this planet you know <laughs> they've, I, if, if i came from another planet i'm not going to stand there and go oh, i come from planet this because i know straight away the probes are going to be out they're going to want to know everything they're going to want to know where you came from where it where your planet is and everything else we know for a fact through science that there are planets out there that are capable of sustaining life we know how far away they are simply because we know how fast light travels and we can gauge distance by how fast that light takes to get from us to them or them to us um you can also also um it's like sonar you beam a signal out and you time how long it takes for that signal to go out to come back and you can gauge it by saying right this beam of light has taken such and such to get from here to there and back again so you split that in half that's how long it's taken to get there that's the distance it is from point a to point b so you know how far away that object is um but we don't know how we, we would never know the full extent of how many planets there are out there that could sustain life and in the future we will find out because humankind will venture out into space we are getting closer to already. nostradamus has already predicted that we will venture off into space we'll leave this planet behind and we'll venture off into space. But it's in the course of time. The rule of general rule of thumb, and again, we've spoken about it before, the general rule of thumb to just see if there's any planets out there, 
capable of sus sustaining uh, life as we know it. And you've got to remember that life as we know it is carbon-based life, who's to say there isn't um, silicon-based life, etc., etc., etc. But the general rule of thumb is when you look up in the sky, for every single dot of light you see, for every single star, not planets, but for every single star, there's generally <laughs> a question mark tail. There's generally periscope. Yeah, two planets capable of sustaining our life, carbon based life, for every single dot you see in the sky. Every single pinprick of light, every single star, there's two planets orbiting it capable of sustaining life. And when you think that there is billions of stars, then you've got billions of planets capable of sustaining life. And for the government, to turn, machine, yeah, just then. for the government to turn around and go, no, 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 and it's been proved, officially been proved, yep. that there are planets out there capable of sustaining life. And we've now I mean, got even. Even people, the likes of Brian Cox, years yeah, ago, he was asked name. about alien life and he poo pooed the idea. He is slowly changing his tune because if you listen to him now, he talks about planets in the Goldilocks zone that yeah. could harbor life. Now, he is now basically admitting that there could be life out there. He's not necessarily saying little green men coming and visiting us in little silver discs, but he is now actually saying there is bound to be life out there. And that is simply because of theoretical science yeah. turning into practical science. Yeah, and it, it is, isn't it? It's, 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 and that's the thing I've loved about doing the show over, over crawl, what's it been, like seven, eight, something like that, years? Everything we have ever spoken about, not, not the ghost season stuff, but every, everything we've ever spoken about on certain conspiracy theories, certain, not all of them, certain, and UFOs, and sightings and this and the other they're coming they're coming true everything that we've said is that could happen or might happen is now happening and all i can like i yeah. say i no, 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 no. but it's it's like when you were saying about all the, the religious people all stand there say oh yeah but you know there ain't no such Even thing yet, and now. up until when we went to rendlesham forest yeah I was skeptical about UFOs. Yeah, I were. loved the idea behind UFOs. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, do you know what? Going to Rendlesham Forest, the home of the UK version of Roswell, yeah. I would be absolutely flabbergasted if we saw something. Now, yeah. not only did we see one thing, we saw five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw five two sodding great big triangles. Explain. I couldn't even explain them. No. You couldn't explain them. And everybody I actually, it to, all went, yeah, whatever. I actually did the aliens, and I went, aliens, in the middle of Rendlesham Forest at yep. the UFO, looking at the aliens. But to see those things, that actually sort of... I know it's it's really, you can see it time, you. I always wanted to go to Rendlesham Forest. And to actually go there was one thing. But then to top it off by actually seeing five things that we couldn't identify using all the technology that we had got at our disposal, we could not say what that was. So it was also brilliant that you went with the alien guy, hey? <laughs> well, of course. But, but that's the thing. To You know, it, it's taken out that bucket list. Because you, you were a sceptic. I remember, I remember for uh, eight years when we were doing this, you were a complete sceptic. I wanted, I wanted to believe in UFOs because I believed there was something else out there. But to actually see something that you can't explain. Joe, hang on, hang on. Joe, Joe, it's not just seeing, is it? It's also feeling. When you've got two black triangles that are blotting out the stars in the shape of a triangle and you've got one there, one there, these things are in the stratosphere. So they're, they're, you're talking about they were the size of three, four football pitches at least. We've seen them. You don't need to feel them because we've seen them, and this, the triangles themselves literally blotted out the stars behind them. And we, we saw it all. We 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 took both of them, put them up on here, didn't we? Well, we watched. We watched the three. Yeah. Fly over. That's right. We know they weren't planes. We checked on all the military and civilian aircraft um, logs. That's right. And there was nothing registered flying over. 
There was no lights on these objects either. No. There was just the one single solid light, no flashing lights, which all aircraft have to have by that uniform yeah, orange color. rules. Yeah. Um, and then to follow it off with the two triangles. No, we didn't poop our pants. We just went, oh, look! Well, well, we were gobsmacked. We couldn't yeah. believe what we were seeing. We were like, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Hang on, it wasn't five objects, it was six. Yes, I did. I just realised it was six objects, not five. There was the, the first two that flew over, sort of yeah. spread out. Yeah. They started off at one point somehow, and then they, they went off like that, didn't they? They went two yeah. different directions. Then you had one that went across the horizon in the wave shape. Yeah. You then had that solid white light that was at the top of that tree. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's it was right, there for yeah. about a minute and a half, and then it just went, it disappeared. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And then we saw the triangles. So that was actually six objects we saw, not five. Do you know how we actually saw those, Joe? Literally in the middle of Rendlesham Forest, on the spot where the UFO landed, they've, they've put a monument, which is a big metal UFO. And we were literally, like, sat up on the UFO, and we were just leaning back, looking yep. in the in the clearing, because you could see where where it landed, because you can see where the old, the old trees that were there in the 80s. And we were look, we were looking at there, and then Wayne's like, "What the hell's that over there?" And we've looked, and we're like, "Oh!" And then one of the others was it you? Or one of the others saw the other light, and then I saw one, and then I was like, "What the f what the hell's going on here?" And then the others have buggered off, and it was like you, me, and a couple of the others, and then we saw one black triangle on one side, and then about five minutes later, there's one the other side. Um, uh, another one had, but we didn't see it. We didn't see it. We didn't hear it. It just appeared. And as I say, they, it, they were so big, they blotted the stars out behind them. And it was a starry night. You could see all the stars. There was no light pollution. And then these these black triangles, like I say, like that, huge, blotted out. Yeah, blotted out the light, the um, stars. So Wayne, apparently you're watching. Thank you for joining us, Wayne. Am I? Yeah. All right. I'm you. There you go. I've had, it on, I've had it on my phone since we started. That's how I can see the questions. <laughs> and you just waved at me. Yeah, I did. But no, I mean, it's, you know, we were there filming an episode of Truth Beyond Paranormal. We've got to go back and refilm it because some of the footage that we got hasn't been handed back to us. Uh so unfortunately, no we're gonna Give have to go shout. back. Give me a shout to me. Again. Can I come? Yeah. Right. Well, you were supposed to be guest guest showing on the on the episode anyway, so we're gonna have to right. get you back to, to put yeah. you in on it. No um but yeah, the two guys that came with us, they took the film footage and they haven't submitted it, so we can't do anything with the episode because we're missing uh, a good half of the material. They don't work for the so, government, do they? No, I think they got too wound up in their own. I think they were working on some Bangladeshi Bollywood uh, filming or something they were doing at the same time as what they were doing with us. All I remember uh, is them trying to drink a water out of a bottle of water without touching it because of COVID. That was the stupidest thing I've ever bloody seen in my life. Uh, 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 uh. And we've all gone, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I don't want to get COVID. <laughs> We're not too sure. We're not too sure when we're going back yet, Joe. We've got to schedule it in because we want to make sure. Summer. We, yeah, we need to make sure that the weather's going to be fine because we don't want to go out there while it's chucking it down with rain or snow or, it's or be summer. generally shitty weather. Um, it's going to be better to go out in the summer because it's it's going to be warmer and we're not restricted so much with time. I could come up on my motorbike. Could do, but then you'd have to come down here, wouldn't you? You'd be staying here, and then we'd be going up there. So that'd just be my turn to drive. This is true. But it'd be good though, because I'll have I'll have I'll have the uh, seven seater by then. So hopefully, possibly, there you go. Maybe. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we're probably going to be looking at going back in in the summer, Joe. We've got we're working out the schedule for TBP, so um, we've got uh, we've got a few places lined up 
that we've got that are exclusive. No one else has investigated yet, so uh, we've got quite a good couple of places coming up. And then obviously we've got to fit that all in with Rendlesham Forest again. So Yeah, exactly. Sorry, the foot for the banging in the background. My dog is going mental. Sorry. That's all right. I've got I've got our youngest cat Shadow. She can't keep still. All the others are all sitting down or laying down. Shadow's got ants in her pants. I've had a very ill ghost for the last about the last six to eight weeks. She's uh, not been very well, and it's nice to see her leaping about and being being a wally at the moment. Let's go. TBP equals truth beyond paranormal. That is correct. <laughs> but yes, uh, anytime it's Rendlesham or UFOs, give me a shout. Yeah, well, I mean, we went back. We went back with um, Ethan and Chloe. Um, we, we went up there with the kids so they could have a look around the forest and that and, and see where we'd been filming and mm. um, Aether was pretty sort of excited about it Chloe was quite sceptical yeah and um, I, I I think this is where I disagree with some schools because she'd been listening to her teacher and her teacher would go on about God this and Jesus that and all of this and I hate it because I don't want the religion forced onto my child. Yeah. Um, I would rather they made their own mind up. If they want to believe in God, then it's their choice. Not being forced or indoctrinated into somebody. Yeah. It should be their choice to believe in God or not. And for her teacher to actually throw it at her and not mention anything else... Is a bit hypocritical, especially when she turns around and she says, well, what about aliens? And then he laughs at her. When you, yeah. you, know, you, you hit the nail on the head, um, if, if you want to see proof of um, aliens and uh, pe you know people from other planets in any religions, look in uh, the Mahabharat, uh, the, the um, Indian religious book, look in that one, and look in the Old Testament of the Bible. Because as it's as Wayne said earlier, Enoch, and there's plenty, plenty of passages in the old Bible that talk about people on circular chariots with uh beamed weapons and this, that, and the other. And again with the Mahabharat, amongst many other religious books, they all talk yeah. about the old the old gods and they talk about their their methods of transport and their methods of war and this, that, and the other. And it's all stuff that we've almost got now. So, you know. Um, look into the old stuff. Don't look into the new books, the New Testament, the King James Bible, nothing like that. Look into the old stuff and then you'll start to find it. No, she isn't, Joe. She's not in a religious school at all. It's normal mainstream school. Um, it's just that the, I mean, well, oddly enough, there are a few children in the class. I think, uh, I think she's got one Hindi child there. I think there's one or two Muslim children in her class as well. But a couple of times now she's come home and she's mentioned God this and Jesus that and they do and they, they do a nativity. The Muslim faith and talks about aliens. Carols and they, they changed words and, and it was all about God and it was being forced onto them. And she would come back and she would talk about God and Jesus. And they'll be like, well, where are you getting this from? So, oh, oh, our teachers said this and our teachers said that. And she got us laughing one day because she mentioned about the earth being 200 uh 2021 years old no nah, mate they shouldn't be that's what they should and i went in school I told you that and she went well our teacher did and i went no, i can't see your teacher. then their teacher's an idiot the earth is 2021 yeah, years old it's a creationist and and she's like well no that's what he said no sometimes you have to take what chloe says with a pinch of salt yeah just sort of laugh it off but then she followed it off with something else which made me think more of the indoctrinated side of things. You know, and I've, I've heard of a number of um, groups within the Salvation Army like to indoctrinate people into the Salvation Army. I've, I've heard quite a lot about it in various places. And I'm thinking, well, to be honest, it happens. And you, you see it with a lot of um, some schools in places like Birmingham, where Muslim yeah. faith has been forced onto the pupils. In a city like, London, because it's well. a predominantly Muslim school, the Muslim faith would be not necessarily pushed onto them, but would be um, 
talked about more because obviously the majority of pupils would be Muslim. And it's just that the Christian children would have to just put up with it. And you're like, um, okay. But I've, creationists, I've got, I've got one thing to say about for two creationists. Um, you'll agree with me on this one. Um, out of place artifacts. Explain to me those. Carry on. Depleted uranium, 1.5 million years yep. old. can only be man-made. It can only be made through a, a process uh, uh, done by us. It's it's not found in nature. You cannot get it any any other way apart from being done through a man-made process. Yep. And they have found... Have a one and a half, you yep. can't have a one-and-a-half million-year-old substance that can only be created by modern technology yep. just here. Yep. Thank you. It was made by a modern technology so creationists explain that one 1.5 million year old depleted uranium you only get it through man-made process how did that happen and, and what a place to find it as well in siberia yeah that's right and also yeah. in the same place um i don't know if you remember when we did that show the same place where they found a depleted uranium there were signs that there had been at one point some sort of they they said it was either a nuclear reactor or or like a um a power like a power station at, at this particular point because of where the, de the depleted uranium was found and there was signs that there used to be pipes and this that, and the other although it was 1.5 million there the, the way the place was done there were signs that there were pipes and this that, and the other alongside all this other stuff and the thing is as well is that that particular area of siberia they didn't actually start doing anything in that area until the second world war yeah and that was only because adolf hitler was getting closer towards yeah. uh kursk and yeah, so yeah. the powers that be mainly stalin turned around and said we need to move our industries away from hitler we can't have him getting our industries so he moved all their industrial might into siberia out of Hitler's reach, so we couldn't get hold of their industry, and that Hitler, kept the, they kept the, the supplies running. Hitler um, technology operation high jump. We'll talk about that at another point. But we've spoken about it before. But to our oh, tell you, talking about technology, this is a classic, and I loved it. I thought it was an amazing, amazing documentary. Hitler's stealth fire. I haven't watched that yet. I did watch the thing with Nick Pope and all the others in. Nick it Pope, still like, like, mate, that you are certainly gets you going. Oh my God! If he'd have actually managed to mass produce this stealth fire, would have been knackered. Yeah. Which one was it? It was the the Harton two nine two, I think it was, or the nine two nine. Is that the one where they made and three of them? Two. It was two. Two, two. two ever built, and one of them still survives. It's it's been it was shipped over to America. And this group were actually given permission to spend about three hours, I think it was, to actually take the measurements and were able to build a replica. And what they wanted to do was to build this replica and then scan it with radar. Because obviously, ultimately, that was what. <laughs> no, that's one of his cats singing him the song of well, the. <laughs> As Tippy, I think he wants to go out. Uh, <laughs> but they, they, they literally wanted to they put up on this big stand and they fired radar at it because yeah. ultimately that's what won the battle was it the wing the, the the one that was the it was the wing it was it's like, like a big bat wing yeah yeah there was no obvious tail to it um and it was just literally a slither of a wing with a little uh, like a stingray yeah that's that sighting of that us uh usaf pilot in 19. 45, I think it was. He saw a squadron of them. It was like one of the first reporters. There was, well, no, it wouldn't have been that one because there was only two of those ever built. Same shape, they, though. They came in. They came into the war too late on in the war. They uh, only built two. Same shape, though. One. They only built two, and one of them crashed on test flight, and it killed the pilot. Um, but they, they, when they beamed the radars at it. It actually reduced the radar signature by 20%. So the plane is actually bigger 
than the radar was making it out to be. And that oh. was simply because the only metal parts that were on this plane were the engine. Oh. That was the only metal parts, two engines either side of the cockpit. And they were set back. So that was even reducing the radar signature. So it actually made it 20% smaller than it actually was. So it was actually, you know, sort of, they, they say like with the modern stealth fighters and the stealth bombers, yeah. um, I think it was the B-2 stealth bomber actually comes up on radar the size of an eagle. So anybody sees that coming in on radar is going to be going, well, oh, it's only a bird. We don't worry yeah. about that. It's only a bird. Yeah. Even the rapier, uh, rapier missile systems, they you can have a tornado GR7 coming in, get picked up by the rapier missile system, but the rapier missile system thinks it's a sparrow because the radar signature is so small, it wouldn't notice it. Um, so, of course, they've, they've looked at it, and all it was was plywood. I think it was something like yeah. seven layers of plywood molded to make this shape. And... When you see that, you think to yourself, Jesus, like, they worked it out that the modern fighters that came over to Britain during the Battle of Britain, I think they said something like it took 16 minutes to get from point A over to us. They would then have, I think, two or three minutes to do whatever they had to do, cause as yeah. much damage as possible, and then get the hell out of there and get back. This jet fighter apparently would have done all that in eight minutes but yeah it was able to fly at 50 feet so it would have been undetectable it would then go up to its altitude it needs to do to cause this damage no fighters would ever be able to come close to it because it was flying at something like 500 600 miles per hour yeah so none of our fighters would have been able to have caught it so it could have come in done its damage and buggered off out before it got detected and they reckoned if they'd have actually been able to mass produce those we wouldn't have won the war. The f I think the fastest thing we had at the end of the war, uh, Second World War was the Mark 8 Supermarine, uh, Supermarine Spitfire, and that was like 582 miles an hour or something like that. I think that was the fastest one we had at the time. But uh, anyway... They, yeah. had, they would have had the element of surprise because they were flying under radar. Radar wasn't able to detect them quick enough, so they'd have got in, done the damage and flown out before our boys had even got up in the air. And the thing is, and it all comes back down to, uh, and it's always been said, in, in not just in our show, but in lots and lots of shows, uh, coast to coast, they talk about it a lot. Um, who and where did they get all the technology from? Because they were way in advance. They were, I think they were 25 years or 35 years in advance of anything we had. And that, and it's still, I mean, when you look at uh, Operation, was it High Jump or Paperclip? No, it was High Jump, Operation High Jump, Admiral Bird. And you look at all that, and I'm not going to talk about it now. We can talk about it at a later date. But you look at everything that happened there. Two ships took out a whole convoy, a whole thing. Where did that? Where did that technology come from? But even then, with with Operation Paperclip, we're getting the scientists out of Germany. You know, the massive race to get scientists out of Germany. And why? And that's because those scientists knew what they were doing. They knew what they discovered. Yeah. The Horton brothers that developed this jet stealth fire, they were also working with the American government, and they were they were actually designing and building a bomber for the American government as well. Yeah. And when the war started coming to a close, they knew that the gig was up, so they hightailed out there, but they didn't have the time to take any of their stuff with them. So, of course, the Americans pulled into this place in, I think it was in Frankfurt, uh, just north of Frankfurt, this big warehouse. They've opened up the hangar doors, and there's this bloody great big jet fighter staring at them, and they're wondering what the hell it was. And then, you, like I say, we, we, we've mentioned it before, you, you look at all this with, with the Nazis, and and especially their, uh, what was it, their um, paranormal division that they had, of the, of the SS. And so many papers have said that they found certain artifacts and this, that, and the other. And uh, I think the other two that they were looking for, but they never found, was Shangri-La and the, the, the Spear of Destiny, wasn't it? They never actually found them. They're supposed to have found many of the others, but they never, never, never got to. They never got the Shangri-La, and they never found Spear of Destiny. <laughs> well, I reckon the Spear of Destiny must be about the size of a toothpick by now. 
Well, when you consider that that, that happened, what, 2021 years ago, something like that, 22 years ago, it's possibly eroded away to bugger all. It wouldn't be much left of it. No, uh, no. Uh, but, oh, and another thing, before we despair, because I'm going to bugger off in a minute, um, we were talking about Mars and how, again, the figure of 1.5 million years comes up. Do you remember the, the redacted CIA reports that I sent you and that we read about on here with the, the remote viewing of Mars? Yeah. 1.5 million years ago. <clears throat> so... Does point to uh, a, something that's going on, big disaster on Mars, and the, the beings on Mars fled and left and went elsewhere. All the legends that say we originally came from Mars, and then you look at uh, uh, the lost continent, um, Lemuria, that not so old as 1.5 million, but you look at all the lost continents, you look at Atlantis, and the legends of where it's supposed to have been, again, 1.5 million years ago. And it's only been the last few weeks that all this stuff's gone with this specific time frame and it, it's ooh, it brings together a lot of stuff we've spoken about doesn't it yeah and it, and it, it sort of gives you a bit of food food for thought because we yeah. think about it the a lot of people theorized that we came from mars because mars was incapable <laughs> that Russian submarine keeps coming back and putting up no. i just keep saying ning 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 that's blossom she's decided she wants a cuddle um <laughs> you know we know that mars did have life at some point yeah it did at now, some point and um, just throwing this one out there but if you look up the way mars is now hmm. is that what is destined for this planet because we are ripping it and raping it of its resources oh, yeah 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 and all the good i'm not going to give a toss yeah. What is going to happen to Earth is what happened to Mars. We're screwing up again. Mars is going to go into a thermal lockdown. It's just going to go, I've had enough. Mother yeah. Nature will just say, sod you, I'm off. And boom, Earth will turn. To be fair, though, it's there. not us that are screwing up. It's the governments allowing that yeah, I mean, to yeah, screw up. Yeah, you can't, we can't really blame the governments as such because I'll global warming isn't out. something that's happened over the last 10 years this is the global warming has been happening since the industrial age hmm. maybe earlier as soon as we discovered fire we started putting these emissions into our atmosphere and the more and more people that start having fires to keep warm we'll you look what's going on with the rainforest at the moment yeah but that, that, that's exactly the point. Your carbon footprint, and then obviously science has discovered this, the carbon it's all footprint. all to do with that. And we're only putting so much in. So ever since humankind has started to evolve and started to think for himself and started to invent things, we actually then started global warming. As mm. soon as we were able to think for ourselves and to develop things, global warming then started to get to a point where you do irreparable damage, you're going to end up with another Mars-like planet. I think this is why we're on the tipping point of people from elsewhere coming along and saying, stop. Um, it, it needs them to do it, as, as we, we said at the beginning of the show, <laughs> it needs them to appear in a place where they're not going to get shot down, where millions of people yeah. are going to see it, and they're going to go, guys, stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop it. And that's what needs to happen. Yeah, we need we need to get out and we need help to do it. Yeah. At the moment, we're not going to get it. Because for anybody who's out there watching this, a lot of us down here, we would like to see you guys and we actually think you're out there. We're not wanting to shoot anybody down or blow anybody up. It's just idiots yeah. in the government that think that. Think that. I mean, I'd, I'd be quite happy to have them come and land in the back garden and have a cup of tea with them. As Joe said, do you think they will listen, though? I think... If you've got people out there that genuinely like to debate and like to listen to things and see all sides of stuff, yes, I don't see why not. And I'm not just saying from myself and Wayne's point of view, because you've got like our side, then you've got the government side, then you've got this, then you've got that. Yeah. Our side represents Joe Public because most of us and I will yeah. I will give you a I will give you a brilliant and great example about 
how people power can be heard. If an alien race was to come to Earth and communicate with thousands of normal people, those thousands of normal people will do something about it. And look at Kazakhstan. <laughs> look at what has happened over there. They have had enough of their government, and within hours, the government was taken out by its population. They Isn't nice? It is nice. <laughs> um, they, they wouldn't take any more shit. From the, the only thing is, is over here, over, boom, and the police quit straight away, and the military went. See you later. It it needs it does need that jolt because, quite frankly, the last time anybody ever did anything over here was the poll tax riots in the eighties, and even then, that was mild as hell. And yeah. since then, the government have been reaming everybody, and it it literally needs a big thing where people go, "Hello, we're here, guys. Uh, if you want us to do something, get them off out of it." And I think. Then and only then will people go. Do you know what they're right? They will do. People start to wake up. Even even and I'm I'm going to say it. Even the EU are starting to wake up. The latest thing with the EU at the moment is them forcing the vaccination onto the population of the EU. And a Belgian minister has actually stood up and said, "You have taken everybody's rights away with this treaty." You're actually telling them they've got to be uh, have, uh, vaccinated, which is taking away their freedom of choice. Yeah, but it's like the North point. Americans uh, are forcibly, uh, allegedly, allegedly forcing people to have inoculations, and that goes against everybody's human rights, basic human rights. Yep. But with all this stuff with the government, the South American government screwing uh, the Amazon and everything like that. It does need people from elsewhere to come along and say, hey, guys, we're here. We can help you. But you have to stand up and say enough's enough and stand up for yourselves with these guys. And yeah. I think that's the only time you're going to get people to go, do you know what? They're right. Especially over here in England, because quite frankly, most of them over here bend over and take it up the backside. So, you know. You can't, you can't really go to a governmental power because a governmental power will just do nothing but. They don't listen. They do not listen to anybody. No, apart from they the won't. They'll do they, because it goes against it goes against their system. I mean, when you look at everything, it's like all this business about dandelions. The government over here is an old boys' club. That's it. It's made to make the rich you richer, know, a lot poorer. It's like dandelions. Dandelions are supposed to be one of the best things, best medicines. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And for various ailments with the body, but the company. That owns that weed or whatever. I think it's weed oil. Uh, one, of the, one of the weed killers. Weed all around that. Just so happens to be the same company that owns one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies that provides heart medicines. I'm not going to say what company, but I used to do security for a certain pharmaceutical, a very large pharmaceutical uh, company. We're talking donkeys years ago, and I can remember seeing some of the posts that this is this just before emails i can remember seeing some of the posts that came in and it was wow and it was a lot of it was redacted and a lot of it was for, for certain eyes only but i can remember back then they were it's they were the ones that told the government how to do their jobs still is the pharmaceutical companies and the petroleum companies are the ones that tell everybody how to do their jobs. What you can't do is look at look at Biden with his um, with his puppet. Yeah. You know, he's he's sitting there being told what to say uh, by uh, by other people, and you're just like, hang on a minute, you're supposed to be the commander. Look at Boris Johnson, blah, 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 the hell. boss of the United States, and yet you're being told what to say by somebody that technically is lower than you. One thing that annoys me about the United States government, not the United States, just their government, um, is a few things I've watched this week, and they've they've come out and categorically stated that they are the leading the leaders of the free world. No, you're not. You're just the leader of your country. You're not the leader of anybody else's country. You're not the leader of the free world. You're the leader of North America. North America, not South problem America, is, not, Canada, not Europe. North the America. problem is it doesn't matter what country you are. Every person in that country will think they are part of a free world because that's all they've ever known anybody in russia china thailand australia south america anywhere in the world will class themselves as a free person in a free world 
America isn't a free world because you have to pay taxes. You have to pay for your health care. And they live off tips and they have no health care unless you so, pay into it. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. So is there such a thing as a free world? Because one, you've got to pay for something. It's not free world, is it? And on that note, I'm going to say that's it. It's been an hour and a half. I think that's enough for the first one. Um, please keep your eyes to the skies and look at what's been going on. Uh, Wayne and I have been doing it exactly just like that, mate. We've been doing it since uh, the last show, and it's just amazing the stuff that's coming out now. It literally is amazing, and, and it's backed up every single thing we've said on previous shows. And it's literally everything we've said, oh, this could happen, that could happen, is now starting to happen. And we're like, mm -hmm. so keep your eyes to the skies. If you hear anything, contact us, myself or Wayne. Contact us on Facebook. Contact us on the uh, the group page for the Dark Mirror Radio Show because it's yep. connected straight to my WhatsApp and I'll see it. So, yeah, uh, great to be back. Brilliant show. Uh, I am absolutely knackered, guys, and I'm going to bugger off because I always shattered. I'm not. I am. Rachel's been up since half past five as well, and I, I need to pay her some attention. So, and the cats oh, keep looking at me. Hey, yeah. I've, over the next couple of days, I've I've got there a few tip runs and more decorating and moving things up into the loft, and, and then I've got to get back to uh, my latest book. I've, oddly enough, and weirdly enough, I didn't realise when I did my live feed on Christmas Eve, telling I'm trying to reintroduce ghost stories or, or a ghost story being told on christmas eve um yeah I'm victorian. and when i finished i sat there and said I'm, I'm like ah right okay and i said to people job done my latest book will be available soon i'm just yeah. gonna finish it off and when i double checked on my laptop i'd actually finished it <laughs> you twat <laughs> but i don't remember finishing it I literally proofread proof it, it first. Proofread it first. Can you when you when you go back into um the Microsoft Word, yeah. it gives you that option to carry on where you left off. That's right, yeah, yeah. So I clicked on it and it went down and as it came up, it went the end. Oh my huh? I don't remember. Did what I, the end did I do that? I don't remember doing that. So I scrolled back and there was about twenty odd pages where the spell check and the grammar has been highlighted. And I'm like I don't remember writing this. Where the hell has this come from? And it reminded me of the story of the old cobbler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the yeah. pixies coming in and making him the shoes overnight while he slept. And when he come down the stairs in the morning, there's this new pair of shoes sitting there. Mate, if you think the pixies have finished your story for you, you need to stop smoking that shit. It I'm was like pixies with your cats. I'm like, where the hell has this come from? So all I've got to do now is just check the, the grammar and the spellings. Yeah. read it through again and then that's ready for publishing so hopefully at the end of the month it'll be ready to 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 buy and hopefully in the next couple of months i'll come down and see you guys and we can go and uh, do whatever and do some lives and everything so next right months yeah all right in the next few months i'll come and visit you i was going to say you've got to make up for the eve eve of christmas eve I was ready to come down. Who was the one who decided, do you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to get COVID. And they caught, they deliberately caught COVID and went, Mark, look at this. Look, my pregnancy test is positive. You can't come over. Uh, we got my ex-wife to blame for that. She gave it to daughter and she gave it to everybody else. On that note, I'm not going to say anything about his ex-wife giving everybody the clap. And we will just say, uh, see you next week. Yeah. So, uh, good night from him. And it's good night from Monsieur. Monsieur. And we will see everybody next week. Um, and remember, keep your eyes to the sky. Let us know if you see anything. And we will be sure to mention it on air. And on that note, see you later, guys. And, dude, great to be back. See you later, mate. Ciao. And doobie doobie doo. Bye.